Hey, what's going on guys? It's Tony with Urban Girl Scout Media. Living the dream as always, coming to you today to talk about some of these spoilers here on the old uh, Magic the Gathering spoilers, uh, mythic spoiler page here. You see it's uh, just December 18th, and well, we got some cards from Caltheim to talk about. Not a lot to really unpack overall. Um, Looks like we're getting another cycle, or the rest of the cycle, of these lands. So that's pretty cool. Good for us. These modular flip lands. Let's talk about some of the cards here, though, on the screen that are really sticking out to me. Uh, first off, we have Halvar, God of Battle. Now, looks like the God cycle is going to come back, and it looks like they're going to do it as a flip modular as well. So this white one, two colorless and two whites, legendary creature God. 4-4. Four, four. Nothing else special about it um, in terms of like indestructible trample, things like that, but it does say creatures you control that are enchanted or equipped have double strike. At the beginning, oh, this isn't going to get annoying. At the beginning of each combat, you may attach target aura or equipment attached to a creature you control to target creature you control. And then the other side of it, so whichever side you choose, uh, you've got this Sword of the Realms. I'm loving the art, by the way. This is cool. Like, this is cool. Uh, Sword of the Realms, Legendary Artifact, uh, one colorless and a white, and its equipped creature has plus two plus zero on Vigilance. Whenever equipped creature dies, return to its owner's hand, and same as the equip cost. So, this, I, upon first look at the cards in this set, I was a little surprised with some of the power. This is actually rather powerful. Um, especially when you look at the, it says at the beginning of each combat on the creature here, it says at the beginning of each combat, yes, the aura or equipment has to be attached, but it's not going to be hard to get them attached. And then that double strike ability is nothing to sneeze at. Pretty interesting. It's Kaya, the in inexonerable. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Yeah, she's cute, whatever. Uh, let's go to Magda, Brazen Outlaw. So, Wizards likes to play it dangerous, and with this one, we've got Dwarves getting a little plus one, plus zero action. Whenever a Dwarf you control becomes tapped, create a treasure token, and sacrifice tr five treasure tokens. Search your library for an artifact or dragon card, put that card onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. So, why in the hell did we make this card? I mean, just asking a serious question, why in the hell? But that's just me. Um, it's cool. I'm glad that they kept the, the toughness that low. Man, that's a, that's a powerful little ability there. And I don't think that after this set, making five treasure tokens is going to be incredibly hard at all. It's not right now, but I think after this set, it's going to become increasingly easy. Our next card you see here is Realm Walker. I want to talk about this. So shapeshifters seem to be uh, making a little bit of a comeback here, right? And, man, I'm going to be honest. This is cool. This is really cool. Now, it is a little narrow when you think about trying to play in, like, green EDH. You'd have a hard time with it because um, there's such a range of creatures. But if you have a tribal deck that runs green, this is going to be a good enabler for you. So it's just got the choose creature type, look at the top card whenever you want, you can play it if it's a creature type. Alright, so here's one of the cards that people are starting to freak out about, uh, Sarulf Realm Eater. And, uh, well, we have three converted mana costs, a colorless, one black, one green, it's a legendary creature, wolf, 3-3, three, three, and it's got a lot of words here. It's real simple though. Whenever, whenever a permanent an opponent controls is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on Realm Eater. At the beginning of your upkeep, if this card has one or more plus one, plus one counters on it, you may remove all of them. If you do, exile each other non-land permanent with converted mana costs less than or equal to the number of counters removed this way. This is going to be... I, I don't know. I don't know what to say about this one. This feels like a card to me that's going to be a problem. I, I don't want to use the B word. I don't want to say broken or busted. 
However, this is the card so far from the set that I'm looking at and just saying, oh, you just couldn't help yourself, guys. <clears throat> just couldn't help yourself. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see how this card is used. It is a wolf, so it's not like that creature type is going to be huge. Um, as of right now, at least. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a bunch more in this set, but that creature type is not a huge threat on its own. So... It, this isn't going to be like a tribal kind of card, but this is going to go into a lot of card or a lot of decks that could use any kind of removal. And that's that's a really dangerous removal. Now, it does hit your permanents as well as uh, your opponents if you remove the counters and do the exiling. A good way to look at this, though, is tokens are in trouble against us. I mean, just one one counter can wipe out all the tokens. So... And then we got two more cards down here. Uh, Showdown of the Skulls. Uh, looks like Sagas are making a comeback. You know, I really don't care too much. This is cool. I mean, it's not, you know, you're exiling the top four, and then you have till the end of your next turn to play them. And then you get to put a counter on a uh, creature you control whenever you cast a spell for the following two turns. So that's pretty cool. This right here, though, the Pyre of Heroes, this I'm excited about. So this two-drop artifact. As an, uh, to activate its ability, it's going to cost two. You got to tap it and sack a creature. You're going to search your library for a creature card that shares the with the uh, sacrifice creature and has converted mana costs equal to one plus the creature's converted mana costs. And you're going to put it onto the battlefield. Only do this as a sorcery. Uh, Giggity, I think, is where I'm going to start. Um, this is, of the cards on the page, this is definitely the one I'm excited the most about. From a casual perspective, and from a person who has several tribal decks, this is going to be very fun. It's not legendary, so it leaves room for, if you're playing um, non-EDH decks, you can get more than one in there. That's pretty big in my opinion, you get more than one on the field. At one time, that's pretty big. I, man, I got a huge smirk on my face. This is probably my favorite card so far. So, this is not a speculation or anything. I, like, I really don't care about the prices yet. I think it's it's so hard to tell prices. And I don't feel confident enough in any of these cards to really say that pricing-wise, this is what I would predict. But if there was a card from this set right now that I would tell you, hey, keep an eye on, it would definitely be Pyre of Heroes. I really, really like the fact that um, they continue to make cards. Like, there's other cards up here that you can see feel more like EDH than standard uh, kind of cards. This feels more like EDH to me than anything else. So there you go, guys. We will uh, talk about some of the other spoilers as they come in and um, if they intrigue me enough to do. But otherwise, that is just what we have here so far. Thank you so much. This is Tony K with Urban Girl Scout Media. Support of women, support women. Guys don't support guys. Okay, but what kind of teammate are you well, if I... the second that you aren't out there, you're trying to sabotage the most important guy on the field? Well, you're, you're, you've gone to sabotage. I would say... There's a difference between sabotaging. Okay, but if, but like, if, say, say Jalen Hurts has, like, a question in the quarterback room, right? And once, no, no, maybe there's no such thing as, like,